in this lesson. We look at an introduction to decimals. Now let's consider this number firstly, 527. All right, we've seen whole numbers before, where that seven would be in the units column, the ones column. The two is in the tens column, and the five is in the hundreds column. Okay, that's not new. We've seen that plenty of times. Now, if we put something after that whole number, okay, a point, that is known as a decimal point. It separates the whole number part with a decimal part. And let's say we had a nine and a three in those positions. We're going to consider those two positions. Well, that nine is in the tenths position, tenths. And the three is in the hundredths position. Okay, so that's what we're going to look at today, tenths and hundredths. Now, just a note on that decimal point, its position can either be at the bottom there or it could be moved up there. Okay, you might see both of them. It means exactly the same thing. Okay, I'll just leave mine as is there. Now, let's consider if we have one whole and let's break it up into tenths. Okay, ten equal parts. Now, if we shade in one of them, that's one tenth. And in terms of a decimal, that is equal to 0 0.1. Here we have two tenths, and as a decimal that is written 0 0.2. Three tenths, what do you think? Did you say 0 0.3? Okay, it's not too hard. Now I've shaded in five there, so that's five tenths, and that's 0 0.5. Now 0 0.5 is a very common one, okay? It's one half. So if you see 0 0.5, you're thinking that's a half. Okay, we've got 9 shaded in, so that's 9 tenths, that's 0 0.9. And a good thing to think about, when you see it's over 10, okay, when we're dealing with tenths, we have what we call one decimal place, okay, there's just only one number after the decimal point. Alright, so that was tenths, what about if we break it up into hundredths? So, okay, break it up to hundredths. Now, how many we shaded there? Well, let's count them by, that's 10 up there, 10, 20, and then there's another eight there. So we have 28 hundredths. And as a decimal, we write that as 0 0.28. All right, what about this one? Well, again, let's count by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. And five more is 75. So 75 hundredths. And again, as a decimal, 0 0.75. Now this time there's only six, so it's six hundredths, and as a decimal, 0 0.06. So if it's over 100, then we expect to see two decimal places, okay? Two digits after that decimal point. Now, we've seen the ten hundredths, okay, as shaded. Well, we can think about that as being, hmm, it's the same, in fact, as one-tenth, isn't it? It's the same thing. So ten-hundredths, 0 0.10 as a decimal, is the same as one-tenth. In other words, it equals 0 0.1. So there's certainly a connection there. In a similar way, 0 0.20 is the same as 0 0.2. 0 0.30 is the same as 0 0.3 and so on. So that continues on. Let's look at some examples now. What number is represented below? So in this particular one, what have we got? Well, we certainly have one hole there. So we'll write one. And in this part of the diagram, four tenths. Now, as a decimal, let's write the one. And the four tenths can be written as 0.4. So, because it's over 10, we expect to see one decimal place. Next one. What have we got here? Well, in terms of holes, we've got one, two, so let's write the two down. And in terms of the fraction part, well, if you counted them up, you'll find 36 out of 100, so 36 hundredths. Now, as a decimal, let's write the 2 down. It's the whole number part. The decimal part, 36 over 100, we write as 0.36. So again, because it's over 100, we would expect two decimal places. 
the next one here, what have we got? Well, we've only got one hole, and we have how many hundredths? Eight. So we have eight hundredths there. The way we're going to write that, we put our one down, and the eight hundredths we're going to write as 0 0.08. All right, 0 0.08. Again, we've got over 100, expect two decimal places.